There are countless window managers on X11, and this should be expected. It's been around for a very long time, it's been popular for a very long time, and hasn't had any substantial changes for a really long time. Move over to Wayland though, and this seriously cuts back on the amount of options that you have. Add in the fact that each of the window managers now also has to be a compositor, so more work has to be done to get a working window manager, and the fact that Wayland is still in a constant state of flux, so if you're using something that is not being actively developed, there's going to be major features that you just don't have. Whereas if you take a window manager from 1997, it's basically going to be the same as a window manager made today. Yes, the bindings might be weird. Yes, there might be some weird design choices, but functionality-wise, all the core X11 stuff is basically just going to work. So my suggestion is if you're not on Wayland but you are interested, you should be looking for an environment that is still actively being developed. But if you're not into a desktop environment like KDE, like GNOME, like Cosmic, what Wayland window manager should you be looking at? What options out there exist and which ones are actually good? The list isn't very long, but there is a list. Now, just because I don't mention something in this video doesn't mean that option is bad. If you use it, if you like it, awesome, keep doing what you do. But I want to talk about things which are still being actively developed to an extent that I feel like as new Wayland features are introduced, they are going to get them at some level of reasonable pace and not three years after the fact. Now, just as is the case on the X11 side, most people looking for a window manager are looking for a tiling window manager. There aren't many floating options which do exist, but there is a couple which are quite notable. The first one I want to mention is LabWC. This is built off of the WL Roots project inspired by Openbox over on the X11 side. It's intended to be a very simple, a very lightweight environment. This is not trying to be the fancy ricer environment with animations and fancy design features like gradient borders and things like that. There's no fancy IPC system to control, nothing like that. This is basically trying to be, I guess, a bone stock W.O. Roots floating environment. For me, I don't want anything to do with that. For me, I want a lot of customization. I want a nice IPC system. I want a lot of additional things to make my environment customize the way I want it to be. But if you're the kind of person who likes open box, you're the kind of person who likes a simple light environment and you don't care about a bunch of bells and whistles, honestly, this is a really solid option. If you're curious about what is in and out of scope for LabWC, check out LabWC scope. This goes over everything going on in the project. IPC, as I mentioned, is a great example. They would much rather prefer working with Upstream, trying to iron out issues with WR Roots, with the Wayland protocols, rather than having some custom solution specifically for LabWC. An IPC system is cool, it's useful, but they feel like it creates some level of fragmentation that hinders general Wayland adoption. I don't necessarily agree, but I do understand this idea of wanting to be basically as clean of an implementation as is possible. Now I want to talk about Wayfire because Wayfire is a very interesting option. If you look at the website, it would seem like the project is entirely dead, hasn't had an update in a year. I don't know why they wait so long between releases, because if you look at the master branch, it tells a whole different story. The project is still very, very actively being developed. So this is the kind of project where if you are willing to run the master branch, if you're willing to run it directly from Git, I do think it's still worth discussing. WeFire is also built off of WL Roots and traditionally is the choice for the Wayland Racer. Things have changed since then, but traditionally this is what people would recommend. It is very much inspired by Compass. As we see over on the website here, 
You get things like the cube. You get fancy animations, burning windows, wobbly windows, all of this stuff where if you were a compiz enjoyer back in, you know, the early 2000s, you're going to feel right at home in what this offers you. It is another floating environment, but it's a floating environment for people who are a bit more exploratory than what you're going to get over on LabWC. Now, a lot of what you get in Wayfire is being integrated into some of the more fancier environments, so it's much less appealing than it used to be at earlier points in Wayland, but it's still very actively being developed, and I still think it is totally fine to recommend if you want to be using the Git version. Now let's talk a classic suggestion along with its soft fork, Sway and Sway FX. So Sway is based on WROOT and by extension, Sway FX is as well. And it's not just based on WROOTs, this is the WROOTs compositor. This is made by the same person who maintains WROOTs. It's kind of the reference implementation of that library. It's a reference implementation that does a lot of things, a lot more than something like TinyWL, but this is a real world usable compositor that a lot of people use, a lot of people recommend, and it was my first experience making use of Wayland. It is the dictionary definition of a standard manual tiler. Sway is very, very inspired by i3. So inspired, in fact, that you can make use of the i3 IPC, you can make use of i3 plugins, basically everything you do on i3, except for the things that are X11 specific, are going to work on Sway as well. From the perspective of a window manager or a tiler, it is absolutely nothing special, but it is a very familiar, a very comfortable environment. If you've used i3, if you like i3, Sway is the most logical choice to go to if you want to move over to Wayland. It's not going to be fancy, it's not going to be incredible, but it's going to feel very, very familiar. Now, Sway FX takes that really solid Sway base and then adds in some fancier ricer features, things like window blur and shadows and dimming unfocused windows and other little nice things which if you want to have a more graphically appealing environment is gonna appeal to you a lot more. It's still a really solid environment but it's a solid environment where you can make it look a little bit more custom. Honestly, both of these are really good options, and SwayFX is a really soft fork. It is literally rebasing on Sway code every so often and updating to newer versions of Sway. It's really not trying to diverge from that project. So if you are using Sway and you want a bit more from it, SwayFX is a really good choice to go with. Now, of course, we have to talk about it. Hyperland. Hyperland is what has given real life to the tiling space on Wayland because this isn't a manual tiler. Manual tilers are, they're fine, but they're a bit awkward. And personally, I'm not a fan and I know people do like them. If you do, go use Sway. But a lot of people like a more automatic system of tiling and Hyperland is that. And it is not just that, it is a really, really ricer heavy environment. It was based on W Roots, now it forked off into its own library known as Arcmarine, and it has a lot of visual flair, it has a lot of animations, it has a lot of just random things which a lot of environments just don't have, like gradient borders, double borders, if those are things that you want to see. Personally, I don't care about either of them, but a lot of people do, and there's just a lot of little things that you can tweak. And if you really want a ricer heavy environment, Hyperland is the place to go. And you can ignore all of that. You can disable all of the fancy features, all of the animations, and have it be a very simple environment. But also, you can go all the way and make something really fancy. And we can't forget there are a lot of tools being developed for the Hyperland ecosystem. Hyper Sunset, Hyper Lock, Hyper Paper, Hyper Idle, Hyper Picker, and a bunch of others. It's really becoming this sort of 
hybrid between a desktop environment and a window manager. You can still use it as a window manager and all of these tools are entirely optional. But if you want to integrate all of the Hyperland ecosystem into the environment, that's there for you to use as well. There is a very active community. There is a very active maintainer. There are a lot of plugins being made. A lot of those plugins are actually made by the main maintainer. I have no idea how he finds all this time to work on the entire suite and the plugins and the main environment. Somehow it happens. And frankly, this is the option I usually recommend to people if they are looking for a Tyler on Wayland. I do think Sway is still good, don't get me wrong, but when people are looking for a Tyler, they're usually looking for something more in line with Hyperland. And with development being so active, expect to see bugs and features addressed really quickly with new releases very often. Early on in the project, things were a bit finicky with versions being completely busted, a lot of changes being made, formats being changed, packages getting broken because of it. But a lot of those fundamental changes have slowed down now, and it's now more focused on actually improving the environment. Something I absolutely need to mention is the only standalone compositor worth using that has both a Wayland and an X11 side. Not something like i3 and Sway, where Sway is a whole different implementation, but the same project having both available. That being the Qtile project. Now, their Wayland support is still very much a work in progress, and a lot of people using it will tell you it's a little bit buggy, it's not in a great state yet, maybe avoid it for now, maybe wait till it's a bit better. But what I can say is it is actively being worked on and they clearly want to have a working Wayland side. And the reason why this is cool is you will have the ability to take one config back and forth between two different versions of the same project. This is something you can do on GNOME and KDE and not really a thing outside of that because most of the window managers are on X11. Most of the window manager compositors are on Wayland. And there's not really a very actively developed other project outside of the DEs which has both available. Now like most everything else on this list, it is a WROOTS compositor and its main shtick is its Python configuration system, which is less of a configuration system and more of a scripting interface because you can go and write functions. You can do all of the normal stuff that you can do with Python. So if you're the kind of person who likes to really customize the functionality of your environment, Qtile, once they get their Wayland version out of an experimental state and are ready to call it stable, that's going to be a really cool option. Now, the reason why everything so far has been W Roots is traditionally that was the best option to go with if you're building a window manager on Wayland. That is slowly starting to change as new, maybe not necessarily new, but other libraries are seeing a lot of active development. Firstly, I like to highlight Miracle WM. This is based on Mir. Now, you might have some preconceived notions about what Mir is, and yes, why did I go over there? Yes, it is that same Mir developed by Canonical. However, Mir is not its own separate thing anymore, and for a long time, it has been a Wayland library. Miracle WM is very much inspired by Sway. It is a tiling window manager, and it's so inspired by Sway, in fact, that they actually want to make use... Does it say on this page? It says on another page, they want to make use of the i3 IPC. So they want to have it so that you can make use of i3 and Sway plugins within this environment as well. Unlike Sway, however, it's not supposed to be this boring W roots environment. In this way, it's more inspired by Sway FX, where there's a bunch of nice graphical features that tiling users kind of expect to be there, like window blur and things like that. I don't know if it's gonna go as far as something like Hyperland, but it is trying to be a lot more than just Sway. 
This is still very early on. There's a lot of things missing from the Mia library, a lot of things missing from any Mia-based environments. But in the long run, I do think this is going to be a really cool option. And if you're willing to watch something grow, I think this is honestly a great thing to go with. It's still very actively being developed. It's still a really cool project. And honestly, I think you should check it out. And I wanted to save the best until last. You know it is the best because it is what I am daily driving and therefore that makes it the best option. Niri, the scrollable tiling whaling compositor. This is based on the Smithy library, the same Smithy library used by the Cosmic Desktop environment. There are not really that many wind managers based off of Smithy. This is a very developing environment. And even so, Niri is a really, really good option. This is based on the paper WM model, where rather than having windows just tile like a normal tiler, you have this infinite horizontal space. It's a very different model, and I get that a lot of people may not be fully convinced into it, and may think it's a bit weird and don't really get it. I've been using it for a while now, I personally really like the model, and I think you should try it out and see if you vibe with it. If you don't, hey, that's totally fine, use one of the other options, but at least try it out and see what you think. Now, it does have some very interesting choices, like the fact that it doesn't have native x Wayland support, instead is using something known as x Wayland Satellite. It's basically a way to do third-party integration of x Wayland into the environment without having to fully commit to designing everything around x Wayland being a thing. Also, it makes use of the GNOME portal backend rather than having their own custom one. Now, I don't have an issue with the GNOME portal. It works totally fine. I don't like the Libidwaiter library, but functionality-wise, it does everything I need. It has the option of capturing individual windows. It works. I haven't had it crash before, and that's basically all I could ask for. Now, as I said earlier, just because I didn't mention your specific environment in this video, doesn't mean it is bad. I know someone's going to say, hey, what about DWL? DWL is a good option, but at the same time, I do feel like it's moving a bit too slow for me to want to recommend to somebody. If you like it, hey, that's awesome, but these are the recommendations that I would personally give people. So, let me know your thoughts. Are you an X11 user who wants to try out a Wayland window manager? Are you a Wayland user and you want to try out a Wayland window manager? I would love to know. Maybe you're the kind of person who doesn't even care and you're happy on a desktop environment. Let me know your thoughts down below. So if you liked the video, go like the video. If you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon. Check out the Patreon subscribe to Libera Bay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and let me know what you like. <laughs>